also, <laughs> and this is going to touch on the next topic I want to talk about. Service time needs to be shortened, like, tremendously. Because yep. another way to make the sport more, more exciting is to give guys like Kyler Murray an incentive to want to go to MLB and not the NFL. I you know what I'm saying? These are more exciting players. Think of Deion Sanders when he played MLB. Think of Bo Jackson. Think about uh, all these multi-sport athletes who wanted to play baseball. Michael Jordan. Um, none of them want to do it now because what's their incentive? They're going to they're gonna sit in the minors for fucking seven years before being called up and then have to wait another number of years before they become free agents. Like, that has to go away too. And what I'm touch talking about is Marcus the Marcus Stroman situation. Yeah. So he opted out yesterday after essentially being cleared to play. Like, I think he was going to start in today's Mets game. And he decided to opt out because of, he said it was family reasons, COVID concerns. Personally, I don't believe it. I think that he, because he had complaints before the season started too. And I don't blame him. But anyway, let me, let me uh, just lay it down for people who don't know what's going on. Um, he had a calf injury, I think it was, and was rehabbing it throughout the start of the season. So he started the season on the I.L., when you're on the IL, you can collect service time. He had collected enough service time that he could opt out and he's still going to be a free agent in the winter. Mm -hmm. So he gamed the system. And I don't blame him because MLB games the system too. Think Chris Bryant when they kept him in the minors so that they can keep him for another year under control. Um, and uh, many other players that MLB does this too. Uh, I think that that Strowman, I don't think the injury was on purpose. I think he was going to start the season, and, and had he started the season, he might have finished it because he doesn't want to abandon his teammates. But after seeing what happened with Yohannes Cespedes, which the Mets haven't really clarified, it sounds like the Mets are trying to be assholes to him, even though he looks like a complete jerk, and he should look like a jerk. Yeah. Um, the team is not that good. Um, I think he was ready to come back. He looked at his situation. He said, I could become a free agent anyway. I don't have to play this season. My team is probably not going to make the postseason if they keep playing like this. I'm opting out. They, they fuck me. You know, the system fucks over players all the time. I'm, you know, I don't think it was like I'm giving it back to them. I think it was just an, more motivation for him not to come back. Like, it was good. Come back. It was, you know it, what I mean? It, it, it's good business because he's not putting himself at risk by doing this. Right. So he he has the most to gain, but I, I just I'm wondering like, yeah, he's sticking it to the system that has screwed over guys like Chris Bryant already and all that stuff. I get it, but in this in this situation, the Mets traded for Marcus Stroman, so essentially two, they two good pitching prospects, two good but, pitch but that I but that I put on Brody Van Wagenen, man. Like no 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 yeah, I put it on Brody sucks I, as a GM. No, I put it on Brody Van. Yeah, whatever. Brody V. I hate saying that guy's name, man. I feel like he's, I don't know. I hate, I hate saying he's that like name. Like one of these guys that ties sweaters around his neck and like <laughs> goes, "Hey, you want to play? What is that game? Squash? Squash? I don't know, man. When they, when they slap the ball and they're like in a glass room. Or oh yeah, yeah. That's called. I think it is called squash. Yeah. Squash, right? Yeah. Ah, whatever. Whatever it's called, we know. You guys know what we're talking about. But hey, you want to do brunch this weekend? But what I'm saying, Mimosa. what I'm saying is that they traded for Marcus Stroman clearly because they want him to help them be a better team. So it, it's like they, if he could play, if it's really because of COVID, it's it's because of COVID. Like I'm not gonna I'm not gonna be upset. But if you really just did this because you wanted to like prove a point that you're going to. Uh, sign your contract on your terms or, or whatever this is, wouldn't it be better if you did play? I mean, what is he really, he's a free agent next season. So he's, he's probably going to end up signing a one year deal. You're going to be a year older. Wouldn't it have been better for you to perform during these circumstances where right. you, you're kind of given a pass if you're not as dominating as, as you could be, you know, like I don't really see what, what he has to gain from this other than if he's really concerned about COVID, you know, then I get it. But you have an opportunity here to really prove yourself. And you're also letting a lot of teammates down because you're not, you're not just some guy that they're holding back. Like you're not like this up and coming prospect. You're, you, you're Mark, you're already established as a starting pitcher. So right. it's like, so, I, kudos to him for, for 
getting it done and safe and sound. If it's about COVID, it's about COVID, whatever. But it's, it's also not, it doesn't sit right with me that he's, that, you know, maybe he did this just to spite, you know, the, the organization or, or whatever. Yeah, yeah. So I, I think, I don't, when, when he spoke in his, in his press conference yesterday, he said that he loved playing for the Mets, that, you know, he wishes he could have taken the ball again for them, and that if, you know, if this is it, then he doesn't regret, like, his time with the Mets. He enjoyed playing for the team and whatever. But um, I'm and I'm I'm not trying to say that he, I'm not trying to say that he's doing this to screw the organization. I think it was just he had no incentive to want to go back because yeah. a the 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 how MLB's service time thing system works against the players' interests. So they have no qualms about holding a player down when it when it's convenient to them. So I think that you know that didn't provide incentive for him and that he was already eligible for, for free agency. He probably put all these things together and said, I don't, you know, I don't have to come back. Like, you know, had, had, you know, had maybe teams been more proactive about calling players up like Gavin Lux, a lot of people feel like they held him down because of service time, Chris Bryant, stuff like that. If, if the system was a little bit more fair in baseball, I saw like, I saw like I'm talking about like the justice system or something, but, um, Mm -hmm. Maybe he would have been like, uh, maybe he would have had some incentive to come back. Like, oh, they they treated me right. Like, I've I've always had opportunity, blah blah blah, which he has had. But you got you got what I'm trying to say? Yeah, no, maybe I, he no. would be like, okay, I'll, I'll come back and play. Like this, you know, this league cares about us. They're doing the right thing. But it just time and time again, the league keeps dropping the ball on these types of issues. And I feel like it just didn't provide him with an, enough incentive to want to come back. Yeah, no, and and, it, and I'm not and I'm not trying to I'm not trying to defend like. MLB or make it seem like Marcus Stroman is being greedy here. I'm, I'm not saying that at all. I'm just saying that the, 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 the team is losing the most at this point. Like yeah, in this, sure. in this particular situation, they already lost Espedes. They already lost Noah Syndergaard. Marcus Stroman opted, opts out. Um, and that team just looks dead. Like they don't look, well, they, they really that don't trade that Cano trade is looking like one of the worst trades ever. Yeah, because that prospect that they traded away is a, is pretty good, I hear. And he is, I think he still has like four years left on his deal. And he yeah. doesn't look like Cano anymore. He's a DH. So you're going to have to hope that MLB implements the universal DH rule moving forward, not just for this season. Because for the Mets especially, that's what he is at this point, you know? Mm-hmm. And and the, other than that, they have some pretty decent, promising players. I feel bad for guys like Jacob Degrom, like the, pro, you know, probably the best pitcher in baseball, and he's pitching for that organization. You have guys like Pete Alonso, who's who's starting off slowly, but he's starting to hit again, um, playing for that organization. You have guys like Jeff McNeil, who they call the Squirrel, and I think it's fucked up because he looks like a squirrel. <laughs> um, you know, they have a de- – Michael Conforto, they have a decent team. You know what I mean? But they, they just – they're run so poorly. It's insane. So, I remember listening to that Michael K episode also, and one of the guys that they had interviewing said – I think it, it might have been John Heyman, actually. I don't know. Whoever goes on – Buster Only, one of those guys that go on the Michael K show weekly, said that his sources – you know, have told them that there's, there's a team in the major league. That's not, they're not really, they're really just trying to get, get done with the season. They're over it. They're not really, they, they're a, they're a pro. My light just went out. <laughs> they, they're, they're one of, they're one of the more promising teams in baseball, but they're, the players are over it. They're not trying to compete. They're annoyed with the whole, uh, quarantine situation, so they're they're over it, and I think it's the Mets, man, because like they look, it has to be, they look dead. They they can't string together hits. Degrom is like a bright spot. Pete Alonso is a bright spot. Steven Matt sucks. So at this point, when Edwin Diaz blows a save, he just starts laughing. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like I feel like they're over it, and I think it is. I think it's the Mets because guys like I can picture a guy like Cano being over it. A guy that's a millionaire that doesn't have to has nothing else right. to prove in baseball already receives criticism for not busting it down the line. Like I would, I would allude that a guy like Cano is, is over it. Yeah. Cano, who, by the way, during summer camp up and went to DR for like a week and a half and provided no explanation. 
and just said, I, oh, yeah, I just wanted to go see my mom and I kept working out. Like, yeah. Yeah, I, I don't know, man. That team just befuddles me. And I don't know what the situation is. They keep saying, they keep acting like it's going to be Cohen's team, but I don't know if it's been finalized yet. Um, yeah. And I feel, I, I kind of feel bad for that organization because. Me too. It's just, they're just, it's like the Knicks. Like, I feel like if the Knicks, if, if, and. And I know that Dolan also runs the Rangers, the New York Rangers in hockey, and they're they're good. But I feel like they're just run really badly. If if they had smarter people running their organizations, I think I think they'd be better off. For yeah. Sure. 